Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I want to talk a little bit about shipping fish. Um, so you'll know that I have bought lots of fish over the internet, whether they be from eBay or from actual fish breeders or fish specialists, which I've had mailed to me through the post. I've had everything from cheap fish up to really expensive discus fish where I've had hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of fish shipped to me and thankfully, crossed fingers, touch wood, everything's always gone really well. Um, I've also shipped quite a lot of fish. I sell fish myself on eBay and on occasion and uh, through my website, aquariumadventures.co.uk. I sell shrimp and I'm just introducing selling some of the fish that I keep as well. So I often get questions about um, shipping fish and what methods I use and whether it's safe and people worry about buying fish online and that sort of thing. And I must admit, I've thought about that myself. So the nights are fair drawn in, as they say where I come from, or it's getting dark and cold. So I wanted to up my game a little bit. So I've invested a little bit in some extra equipment or some extra gear that I'm going to use for my fish shipping. And I thought, let's have a look at it. Maybe we could do a bit of a test and see how good or bad it really is. So come with me. So this big old box turned up today. This is something I've invested in. It's from Mr. Polystyrene on eBay. Um, I've used their stuff before, but it's essentially um, pre-built polystyrene boxes. So you get a box and a lid that fit together. And it also comes with a cardboard box as well. So it's a pre-built, really thick thermal polystyrene um, which is a lot better than the stuff that I have been using. And the stuff that I usually use is fine for summer and spring and maybe early autumn, but as the nights start to get colder, and this is potentially going to be sitting in a, a postal shipping office overnight with not very much heating, well, no heating, I wanted to see how good I could make it because I don't want to harm the fish. So this is the box when it's all made up. Like I say, these are kind of custom built for the UK um, they're even marketed as fish or reptile boxes for packaging because they fit under the the limits of a standard um, small package for the for Royal Mail. So it comes with this, you get your box. Polystyrene's already pre-built and pre-sealed, so there's no gaps there. Um, and just to show you the difference, this was the polystyrene that I would use to make my old boxes for, or my summer boxes if you like. These are the ones that I would send my shrimp in when it's warmer weather. And then if you look at the difference there, so these are a lot thicker and denser as well. So they should retain a lot more heat. I've also upgraded my um, heat pads. So I usually put in a heat pack, um, especially if it's getting a bit cooler. But I really, I need to plan or I want to plan for failure. So I want to plan for a delivery that gets missed. Um, so I'm going for 48 hour heat packs rather than 24 hour heat packs. So I can basically get in here, I can probably get um, kind of four bags in here if I wanted to, um, or depending on what fish it is that we're selling or what shrimp it is, um, I could pack in a lot more. So it's, it's a decent amount of size that I can get in there. So we can get in there, we can fill it with a bag, we can fill it with some stuffing. Uh, I use packing peanuts and bubble wrap and various other things like that. But I thought before I ship anything, let's get a bag of water in here and do a bit of testing. Test the temperature before we put it out there. Come back in the morning, have a look and see what it is because I'm told and by some very chatty postman that the sorting offices where these things might get left for overnight, they're not heated buildings, they're essentially big warehouses. And while they are insulated to a degree, they will get quite cold, so the temperature will drop down quite low, especially if it's really cold. Um, so let's give it a go. We'll go and we'll not bag up some fish, we'll just do it with water and test the temperature. So if you are interested in fish, what we will be selling through the website um, is going to be guppies. So once we get a big enough breeding population going, um, cherry shrimp, which are kept in these tanks up here. We've got snails, are kept in these tanks down here. And then on that tank and this tank, we've got the bristlenose pleco harem, no, it's whatever the word is. Tons of babies in there anyway. So what I'm going to do is I've listed some on the website already. You can go and have a look. There'll be links in the description. Um, I'm putting, I've put a few in here just to 
kind of segregate them, the ones that I want to keep for sale, so as I know if someone does buy them I can starve them for a day and then we can get them packaged up and posted off. A um, couple of different sizes, but ultimately this is a, a breeding project. And the way I'm looking at this is, over the years there's been various changes made to the regulations here in the UK about what you can and what you can't sell and whether you need a licence and things like that. So before it was always the case that if you were a hobby breeder, so like me these are just little projects I've got in my garage, I'm not importing fish, I'm not shipping them here to specifically sell on uh, at profit. This is just me breeding fish for pleasure or for fun and having a lot of fish left over so I need to do something with them. Um, so, I mean, I do quite often just give them away to people or, or sell them at auctions, uh, at fish club auctions and things like that, but I've sold them on eBay and things like that, and the, the rules, they're so vague that I've stopped doing that for a long time. Um, it's certainly the case that with invertebrates you're allowed to sell them, that's not a problem, because it seems that those lives don't matter, it's only the fish that they care about. But having spoken to even the council, to various people in the industry about what you can and can't do, I think I'm safe. And I'm going to go with, I've made some reasonable endeavours to find out whether or not this is legal and I'm allowed to do this. And I'm assuming I am, and there are tons of people doing exactly the same thing, if not more. So until someone tells me different, I will give it a go. I just wanted to avoid having to go through the rigmarole of getting a pet shop license which is what some interpretations lead you to believe and um, because it's quite expensive here in Sheffield to do that. But anyway yes these are my breeding projects so as the I don't know as the angel fish start to pair off and start to breed now there'll be angel fish for um, sale. If we get the pea puffers breeding I have successfully bred one pea puffer and um, maybe they'll be for sale. Um, yeah, so keep an eye on the website basically. But what we'll do first is we'll just get a bag of water, bag that up, take the temperature, stick the box outside, come back again in the morning and find out what's happened. I've got my bag of water, um, we'll take the temperature of that in a while. I've got my heat pad, this is just a 24 hour heat pad but hopefully that should be good enough for these testing purposes. Um, I'll put them in there, I'm going to put in some packaging as I normally would because I wouldn't just send it like that with nothing else in there and we'll see what happens. So let me get some packaging. So I've got my digital thermometer. We'll take the temperature before as we start. Okay, so it's 29.9. I don't know if you can see that. It was 29.9 degrees. Um, heat pad's still warming up as we speak. So what I would normally do would be I'd wrap this bag in a bit of bubble wrap and because I think it's key to keep the heat pad away from the, the bag because you don't want it touching it because that can actually make it too hot for the fish that's in there. And the heat pad needs air to work so generally I'll pack it like this, I'll leave it sitting out for maybe 20 minutes or so before I get it away. Gives the heat pad a chance to heat up. Um, so yes, I was going to wrap that with some bubble wrap and then fill it with these just packing peanuts basically. Let's do that. So that's the, the bag of water or the, the fish. And um, here we've got the heat pad. And if you just look at the heat pad, for instance, I don't know if can you see that it says 30 point. Uh, it's bang on 30 degrees. Depending on which bit I aim at, between 29 and a half and 30 degrees. And if I aim at the side wall of the box, for instance, it drops way down to under 24. Um, so I'll fill that up, I'll seal it up, give it the best chance, and see how we go. Obviously, if I'm investing in more expensive heat pads, more expensive packaging and boxes and materials it makes the shipping costs a little bit higher, but I'm hoping that's not going to hurt here because this isn't necessarily a, a money-making adventure or anything like that. It's more about making sure that it's a successful venture and that the fish ship safely. Um, so it will be a little bit more expensive on shipping. Um, but I'm hoping the people that are buying fish off me aren't necessarily buying them because of the cheapest around, they're buying them because they know that hopefully I've looked after them well and they want them to arrive in the best shape. Anyway, let's fill that up with packing peanuts as I would normally. 
Uh, sometimes I'll just use paper or more bubble wrap, but it's essentially scraps. I just it's to stop the thing moving around more than anything else. But it does provide some form of insulation as well. And then we'll seal it up. I've got a funny feeling it might rain tonight. So I'm going to put them in my car instead. So I think that will simulate a, a sorting office quite well. So if I just stick them there in an unheated car, leave it there overnight. See what it's like when we come back. Okay, it's about midnight. Just coming out to check how hot or cold it is. So that's saying about 1.8 degrees Celsius. Pretty cold. I'll come back and check it in the morning. temperature last night according to the internet in this area got down to four degrees obviously we measured it around midnight at about two but that was the car specifically the bit of metal so that might have got a bit lower anyway it was cold i think that's the thing to say so still got the box here still fully sealed let's open it up got the temperature gun have a look and see what happened I am fully expecting this to have dropped a few degrees and i think that's perfectly normal and perfectly acceptable um, what we don't want is a massive drop in temperature because fish in the wild it gets cold at night so they can adapt and survive that so there we go we've got the package obviously if we take out and unwrap doesn't feel particularly warm, but let's have a look. Eighteen degrees. That's more than I thought, if I'm completely honest. And the heat pack. Still really warm. I think what we need to do is locate the heat pack closer to the the fish bag. So let's try that again. So that's probably not going to be fatal or anything like that, but it's not going to be very comfortable having that um, swing in temperature. So I'm sure we can make it better though. So first idea is obviously I had the fish over on this side and all the packaging on this side and the heat pad here. What we can probably do is get the heat pad a lot closer to this while still remaining safe. You don't want the heat pad touching the fish, but if you've got this buffer in between, you can get the heat pad a lot closer. And also I had the lid here was just gonna sat on top and squished down, but I reckon if we seal the lid with some tape to make it a proper seal, that'll hold in a lot more heat as well. So let's get a new heat bag, heat bag? Let's get a new heat pad, a new bag of water, or get that one back up to temperature and seal it up and try again. Okay, so at this time we've got the heat pad in first. We're going to put the, the water on top, but with a few layers of bubble wrap in between. Then we'll fill up this void. I think possibly one of the other problems is because it's, it's quite a small water volume, it's a bit harder to keep it up to temperature. So if I'd filled up the box maybe with other bags of water, which I might try actually, that would probably help too. Or maybe that's just a shameless sales technique to say buy more fish and get a full box worth. Um, but we'll see how this goes on. I have high hopes. So again, that was 28. Um, well, I probably won't measure it through the bubble wrap now. Oh, yeah. It's about 28 degrees this time. Fill this back up, seal it up, 
back in the box, back in the car, and we'll come back and have a look at it in the morning. Morning, day two. Um, apparently it was roughly the same temperature last night. It was a little bit colder. Um, I didn't check the car in the middle of the night, but I'm assuming everything's stayed the same. So it's a little bit later in the day because I had some stuff to do this morning, but let's go out and grab that box and check it out. Right, I've got my ray gun and knife at the ready, got my box here, um, I don't know if I'm imagining it but it actually feels colder on the outside, but we'll have a look. Um, I know there'll be people dying to comment on how unscientific this test is, it's not meant to be a scientific test, it's more of just a general check on what happens. So obviously the temperatures have been different on both nights, but similar. So here we go, the box in there with the sealed this time. Let's get it out. definitely feels much warmer. I don't know why it always takes a long time to read the first time you use it. No, that can't be right. Still saying 28. So the heat pad is warm on there and it hasn't gone down anything. I wasn't expecting that result either. <laughs> okay, I don't know what to say about that. I wasn't expecting yesterday's result. I wasn't expecting today's result. I was expecting it to have dropped another couple of degrees and it's Stayed exactly the same, possibly even gone up if anything. I don't get it. Um, well, I guess the one thing we can take from that is that's definitely the way to go, is sealing the box before we put it in the cardboard box. So what do we make of this? Um, obviously this wasn't a scientific experiment, like I say, there were no controls done, nothing like that. They were just trying some things and seeing what happened. But I really didn't expect to get that. But I suppose it does explain a little bit when I have ordered fish in, online in the past. Sometimes they've come and they've been really hot. Sometimes they've come and they've been really cold. And looking at them, I couldn't see any immediate differences before. Um, but I guess just the location of the heat pack and whether how tight the seal is makes a big difference. Um, obviously these heat packs, they need air to work as well, so you can't really seal them too much, but I guess because I'd activated the heat pack before I put it in, maybe that's why that worked so well. Um, and putting it so close obviously made a big difference. I'd be interested to know if it had man maintained that temperature throughout the night, because I know those heat packs can get warm. Um, so one thing that might be interesting for a future video is whether or not that temperature actually, if it started at 28 and then rose to 30 or even higher maybe and then came back down to where I've just measured it there. And um, that's the one thing to check. So I'll probably run a few more tests and um, might make the most boring video ever. So I'll, I'll probably have a look at that offline and then by all means check me out on Facebook. You can join my Facebook group. I'll probably post some of the results there as I do those experiments. Um, but I think that's fair to say that I can quite confidently ship some fish now, knowing that at least the temperature-wise, they're not going to be too much of a difference. So we'll leave it there today. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can click that subscribe button, you can join the channel, you can do all those good things. Uh, but let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye!